the this color as well, just bring it down a tad a little bit and let's quickly have a quick look in here alright so obviously we need to still need to do some work here so for the back SSS let's re reduce this a little bit because we are incre we added the color in and I want to make sure that I have more color values in here and uh, actually let's reduce the depth as well I don't want I don't want that to come in here very strongly Spec clarity, let's reduce the shine, it's too shiny for my liking, just make it 5 and maybe reduce it a little bit in the color for the bump, we're gonna put our uh, our normal map okay, so let's have a quick render here and see what's going on alright, so here it is less likely better actually let's keep this image for feature comparison and let's tweak the shader a little bit more okay so what else we need to do here for the algorithm control um, let's, let's try to increase this a little bit okay so this is for the algorithm that is 1 and this is for 10, it's too dark for 10 so I'm just gonna drop it back to 1, I think 1 was a good value however it's still a little bit too dark and that's because the shader itself is not taking in consideration the final gather so if I go to the hyper shade and look on my MIS fast there you go and I'm just looking for this node which is the light map node and I want to say include indirect lighting and that will put in mind or make it consider the final gather contribution to the shader so here's the color so it's coming up and you can see immediately it's more bright because it's taking the final gather with uh, contribution in mind and of course because I'm using a gray color or uh, for the background it's using that to light up the scene so just comparison between this one and this one is much nicer. So for this I'm gonna call it the save and I'll be happy with this one. Alright. The last one is the blend. Actually uh, let's do that one more time. I'm gonna create these. I'm gonna create another layer because I like this blend color but I want to do another one here and assign a material override blend to it and let's reduce the color a little bit and maybe a little bit less diffuse let's pick a little bit lower and I don't want it to be reflective at all actually yeah 1.7 is nice yeah let's make it 0.4 now let's see how that will look like I wanted a great a great color for it and of course we need to put the displacement on normal map but I'm just going for the speed here I just want the, the, the right color that I'm looking for Okay, so that's nice color. I need now to hook up my displacement and normal. And for here, I'm gonna go to the displacement. These two here, and just expand them. All right, so let's see how that will look. Okay, so that's it for me. So I'm going to do now the final thing before I go adjusting my this to 4 and this will match my um, Montbox file so if in the Montbox files I'll have 4 levels, levels beside the level 0 so if this is 0 we need to subdivide it 4 times so you need to put 4 in here and now we're pretty much ready to render so I'm just going to pause this and get back when I have the files rendered already so I thought I'd point out that uh, when you're doing the render layers, the first render that happens is the bottom layer and it makes its way up. So the first one that finished was the SSS followed by uh, the blend and you can see now the AO is starting and it's uh, giving me the percentage. And I chose my PNG to be my file format, this is why you can see it in here. So once that everything is done, I'll put launch Photoshop and put them all together. You can see it here at the bottom. We can check their rendered files in the images folder and you'll see them happening here. Under each folder, under each layer name, we'll create a folder and in it we'll have the render file. So I'm just going to go now to Photoshop. I'm just going to close this.
and these are the images that we're going to be working with. Um, for the pure gray and the um, this is the uh, the blend shader and this is the SSS shader. They they all going to have the same method at the end. So I'm just going to minimize these for a second. And all I want from here is the depth and the ambient occlusion. So for now, let's just uh, bring this guy here. And I'm just holding shift and lift mouse and dragged on top of this. It'll bring it automatically on top of that other layer. Let's just zoom in a little. And what we want is to DB this to be multiplied. And this will give me that ambient occlusion color. You guys hopefully can see this from the recording. All right, so this is a little bit too strong for my liking. So I'm just going to drop this to be something like 60. In here, I need to adjust. Actually, let's put another 50% uh, gray here for this background color. And now we can adjust the levels just a tad. Maybe some uh, hue and saturation. Let's increase the saturation just slightly. So this is all going to be artistically up to you. You can adjust it according to your need. Okay, so these are that for this layer here. So now I'm just going to do flatten the image and duplicate it one more time. And we already used the ambient occlusion. We don't need it anymore. We just need the Z depth. And actually for the Z depth, uh, let's put here, put it on black and flatten it. Now for this layer, I'm just going to activate the selection mask, which is this button here, layer mask, sorry. And now when I go to the channel, I see that there's an empty channel waiting for me. So if once I activate that and I hit Control A, Control C, select all and copy and go to here to this selection mask and do control V and that you will see that now it's app became red and that shows me what can be used for selection when I go to this layer in here and for this let's click on this layer to activate it and go to I don't need, I don't need the selection anymore and go to filter blur lens blur so now for this here I'm gonna source source it to be for the layer mask and that will enable the Z depth file to be used as a layer mask for the uh, lens blur and let's give this a value of 4 and increase the amount a little bit and let's do invert there we go maybe noise is a little bit down so this is going to be again totally up to you for your artistic look so you can see now I'm having blur happening on this part here which was in the back uh, maybe it's too much of a radius here. A tad, and hit OK. All right. Once you're once you're done, you might not see anything happening. And actually, this is between and after. You, you barely see anything. So you need to delete that layer, and you make sure that you're clicking on the mask layer, and put it on the garbage. And say delete. Now you can see it. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that effect that we were talking about earlier, which is the using the Z depth to drive the depth of field or the blur. Last thing I'm just going to do is filter, uh, sorry, distort lens correction. And I'm just going to use some vintage just to burn the edges just a slight. That's it. I have my image. I'm just going to layer. My image done. I had uh, depth of field been applied using the uh, the Z depth channel and I use the ambient occlusion as a multiplier and give me my depth in here that uh, increase the effect of depth that's happening in here and emphasize on it more and I'm just going to apply the same technique on the other images and uh, that would I call that would be it for my, um, for my presentation for today I hope you guys enjoyed this session I'm looking forward to talk to you more